Hello and welcome back to this class on empirical banking and finance. We've already talked about the main sources of inspiration and we'll talk now about important versus unimportant questions. And the starting point is a very popular proverb. Uh, there is no such a thing as a stupid question, only stupid answers. Problem is, in research this doesn't really work. It's not really true in science. Yes, you can say that research questions are often simple uh, or they are stated in the simple way, but the problem is answers are usually not. They can be simple, but most of the time you have a very simple and easy to understand question, but a very sophisticated answer to this simple question. Yes, research often takes up past problems and questions others might have already answered, but there is always new data available. You always have new methods that allow you to answer and work on a question in a much better way. And thus, it's always worthwhile to revisit a problem. However, Research is exploring the unexplored. So you work on questions that um, are still unanswered. If you are trying to answer a question again that has already been answered, this is just a waste of time and resources and you should do something better with your time. Just because you are unaware of a finding does not mean that there is no answer to your problem. So you have to go to the literature, you have to look through the research that has already been done and try to figure out whether there is an answer out there to your question. If there is, there is no need to do research again. So go back to the literature, go to the um, finance conference websites, go to SSRN, which we all haven't mentioned yet. SSRN is um, a repository for research papers that is uh, very current. It's a social science research network, so go to SSRN.com and you will find the latest working papers in finance and economics. And you have to go to the literature, read through the journals, read through SSIN and make sure that there is no paper, no piece of work that has already looked at your question in a sufficient way. And going that extra mile will pay out in the end because if you do your empirical research and then later on find out that someone has already done this and you haven't found out about this because you were too lazy, well, that's, that's not good. So well put questions can still suffer from one serious problem. The question could simply be of no interest to your audience or to society as a whole. And I'll give you a certain um, number of examples. For example, uh, these are the IG Nobel Prizes. Uh, they are ignorable. Uh, so it's sometimes the anti-Nobel prices. And these two examples come from economics. The first one is ovulatory cycle effects on tip earnings by lap dancers, economic evidence for human asterisk in the Evolution and Human Behavior Journal from 2007. And the second example is dying to save taxes, evidence from estate tax returns on the death elasticity. Now, shortly summarized, uh, what do we learn from these extreme examples if um, you want to take a humorous approach to these papers? And especially what are the policy implications? In the first one, the authors show that actually lap dancers uh, earn more or less uh, based on the menstrual cycle. So what could the result be? Uh, lab dancers should adjust their working schedule to their menstrual cycle to earn more money from tips. Uh, that's not very realistic. Um, the second example, people should time their death so they should choose when to die so to save on their offspring's inheritance tax. So if the uh, inheritance, uh, if your uh, inheritance you give on to your children is taxed by governments, uh, then maybe you will time your death to save taxes for your children. Uh, no one will time their death just based on inheritance taxes. So government should 
change tax laws to eliminate such loopholes. Not very likely, and I don't think you need that. So both examples show that fancy research questions, unique data, which we, which we see a lot of times, and a sound empirical analysis cannot make up for a topic that is simply not interesting enough for a broad audience or just as ridiculous in these two examples. Moreover, both topics suffer from a common problem in empirical research. Sometimes we lose track of what is important and we are just in search for more freakier data, uh, more freakier and more sophisticated econometric methodologies and consequently we lose track of what really matters or what society needs. So a research question should be important to society, to policy makers and it should be not as absurd as in these examples. So what makes a good research question, what makes a good uh, research question important. First of all, trivial, it must be unanswered. The question or answers must be important for a sufficiently large number of economic agents. It might be interesting to study uh, the market for pets, but that's only a small part of a modern economy. Um, so it must be important for a large number of economic agents, for example, firms, banks, governments, households, etc. The question must affect an aspect of the economy that ideally is vital to its proper functioning. This is one reason why we are studying banks um, as a separate industry sector and not just like any other industrial sector. Question can be simple, but the way to arrive at an answer should be non-trivial. So you need clever work to answer your question and that you can establish causality. That's not really part of the question, but still you need to be able to establish causality um, to have um, a good research question. Now imagine you ask your parents or your friends, people who are not familiar in economics, uh, and you ask them what economics as a social science should achieve. What would they tell you, especially if they had no background in economics? Probably they will say it's all about jobs, creating jobs, creating employment. It's about economic growth, higher income, uh, higher profits, uh, maybe higher salaries, wealth and prosperity for the people a just income or wealth distribution. You should be able to explain and prevent the next economic or financial crisis. Firm profits, we already had that. Higher return on investments. And um, at a higher level, maybe why do people, why do economic agents, why do firms act the way they do? So that's what matters in economics. So economic research tells us how we can decrease unemployment why firms choose certain business models, why some are more profitable, why some are more um, successful, why, while some other firms are not, how sound economic policy can lead to stable economic growth, growth how crises can be prevented and how markets function. Then, when is a research question not important enough? If it, for example, covers a part of the economy that is simply not vital, pets, horse races. Um, if you only study the sector for horse races, it could be interesting to some horse owners and some uh, race companies and uh, racetracks operators, but it will only have a marginal effect on overall employment, so that's not important. However, it could be that you can observe some kind of mechanism in the pricing for horse races that can be generalized and the market for horse races is simply a very good laboratory to study this pricing mechanism. Then it could be interesting. But if it's a very general question, no, probably not. And if the overall effect of a phenomenon is small or limited to some firms, for example, if you study minor improvements to quantitative risk models, this will definitely help some trading houses and some banks, but it will um, only marginally affect economy as a whole. So um, what it significantly the increased firm profits is the effect even measurable. That's highly doubtful. Nevertheless, um, to give you um, a disclaimer here, I've done this type of research myself. However, it's not something for an A-level journal, but it's something for what we call 
a field journal in maybe quantitative finance. So it's not general interest, but it's a uh, field journal. It's the um, papers and it's research done on a subfield in finance. Then, when is a research question not important? If the probability of an event happening is just so low that it is not worthwhile studying, study a hypothetical meteor impact, probably not likely. If the economy you study is too small, I see this a lot of times in proposals for theses that people take a research paper or they take a famous model and say, I want to try this on German data. I don't care. If this has been studied, say, for example, for the European Union or for the United States, why study it again for Germany, for the German market? Simply because it's Germany, we don't need that. That's not something new. You should only do this if you expect the results for some reasons to be completely different. So it could be maybe that you study the German banking sector because we have a lot of Sparkassen, savings and loan associations that are owned by the government. This is a completely different setting than, for example, in the United States or, say, in the United Kingdom. Then, yes, it's okay to study the German banking sector. But papers like this, the empirical validity of the capitalizer pricing mo model in Morocco, that's not something worthwhile. Why? Uh, it's very interesting to read uh, this link here. This example is taken from uh, Cam Harvey's Reflections on Editing the Journal of Finance. And he described uh, such a topic in his uh, reflections as a topic not appropriate for the top general purpose journal in our field. Um, yes, that's it. So what makes banking finance topics appropriate, relevant for the general audience? Usually banks provide loans. Loans enable firms to grow. <coughs> they employ more workers. They earn higher profits. Banks take deposits and this makes banks inherently unstable and households use banks for their savings. They create financial instruments, so they are creating investment possibilities. I already said that deposits and uh, the maturity mismatch of banks make bank, uh, banks inherently unstable, so there's a potential for a financial crisis. And if you have a financial crisis, because banks offer payment transactions and payment services, you will see severe losses to economic growth and welfare if banks fail, if you have a financial crisis. And because of all of this, you have a regulated industry and a need and usefulness of regulation. So that's what makes banks interesting to economists as well. Finance, the same thing. We have financial markets. Financial markets create investment opportunities. So we want to study the market efficiency and asset pricing. We see corporate finance that firms, any industrial firm, does um, choose its capital structure. Uh, they take a finance decision. And these financing decisions will have an influence on employment, on the stakeholders, on profitability, and again, ultimately employment. So this is a very um, important part of corporate decision-making. Then behavioral finance. We want to explain financial decisions of the average household. So this is actually part of behavioral economics. Financial institutions, we've seen this for banks. The same more or less also applies to insurance companies. And risk management is also, if you um, regard it as corporate risk management, it's part of corporate finance. And again, we see a value of doing risk management. And this is important uh, to economists as well. So these are uh, important versus less important questions. Uh, you have to concentrate on the important ones. And I've given you some ideas how to make sure that your research question is important enough to be interesting to your readership and to your audience.